I just bought another flip and today I'm going to show you around, give you the numbers, the details, why I bought it. And if you're wondering why I'm holding on to Jersey Mike's, it's not for me, it's for my contractor. We closed on this bad boy about two weeks ago and we're already almost done with construction. Actually, we closed on it on May 15th and we will be done with construction in two weeks. It's currently May 24th. And when it comes to flipping, the first question everyone asks is how did you find the deal? You guys know I'm a real estate agent so I have access to the MLS, but that's not how I found it. I had sent out some mailers a year ago, a year ago. I had spent $2,800 on mailers before I decided to buy apartment buildings. And I got a bunch of calls, I never really pursued it, I let it go. But randomly, 11 months down the road, I get a call from the owner of this townhouse, hey, you sent me a mailer, I've been saving it, my tenant finally left, would you like to buy it? I said, sure, I came, I took a look, and. I said, let's make a deal. And long story short, I was going to wholesale it to a client of mine and I just decided to buy myself just that good of a deal. Let's go show you inside and afterwards, I'll share the numbers. Like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy this. Thank you, sir. For your hard work and dedication. <laughs> Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, you've already met Gabriel already. He's from Lux. You are wearing the wrong uniform, G. I don't, I don't have a new uniform yet. <laughs> he may not have the right fit on, but he's the best contract in the Chicago <laughs> suburbs. So, if you need some work done, you got to hit up Lux Renovation. I will try to put their email in the description. So like I mentioned, we bought this place May 15th. It is now nine days later. Let me show you what we're working with, okay? So here we are in the living room. What I loved about this flip and why I actually wanted to buy is because when I came in, everything structurally was in great shape. It's a townhouse, so I don't have to worry about the siding, the roof, the plumbing. It's really not my problem. All we're doing is wax on, wax off type of work, which means we take the old flooring, we put new flooring. We take the old trim, we put new trim. Simple stuff like that is all we're doing, which is why we're able to get it done so quickly. We don't have to wait for plumbers to come out, electricians, or any real complicated structural work that takes forever and costs a lot more dollars. Anyhow, so when I walked the unit, I was like, I love the layout, I like the, I like the location, and I most certainly love the price. So we ended up pulling the trigger. Over here, there used to be this big cabinetry. Maybe I'll, I'll include some B-roll of what it really used to look like. But the kitchen was right here, and this is where the kitchen will be again. And we're just going to leave this site empty. I asked my contractor, can, should we just, boom, put all the cabinets to the wall? But then I said to myself, that's going to cost me an extra uh, probably $1,000 in cabinets. Am I really going to get a return on my money? No, because most... Buyers, when they come in, they're not going to care whether the cabinet stops here or it stops at the wall. So I didn't do it. And I should also at some point mention the spec. This is a two bed, one and a half bath with a basement downstairs. And uh, there's a bedroom actually in there. That's really all the basement is. But we get to advertise it as a three bedroom because it's got an egress window. I'll show you that when we get downstairs. So we, can, we can't both fit in this bathroom. But as you can see, this is a very tiny half bath. And to be honest, you don't really, your half bath does not need to be big, but because it's tiny, again, it's cheaper to remodel. Let's go show you the basement. So this is the basement, and when I bought the place, they had these like ceiling tiles pretty much everywhere. Some of them were falling apart. As you can see, we got drywall up. This is the egress window. It's missing right now, but and it's just hanging out over there. <laughs> but once we put this in, and we're gonna build out a closet, which, we're just going to pretend like there is one. And then we're going to mark it as a three bedroom, which means we should be able to get a little bit more dinero. Now let's go upstairs because there's really nothing more to see here. We're just going to put uh, vinyl flooring down here, vinyl flooring on the first floor, and then carpets on the staircases and upstairs. So what you guys don't know is we're doing a flip, but Gabe is actually also renovating one of the units in my apartment building. So we got two projects, both being done on... Actually, you're done with that. He's pretty much done with that. We just got to paint it. Now let's go upstairs. Okay, let me show you the bathroom first. So it smells horrible in here right now, but it's been a full gut. Uh, we did not get rid of the drywall here. As you can see, it's not a massive bathroom. I don't need too big of a vanity, and we are able to save the bathtub. Always, always save the bathtub. It's very important. It's, it saves you a lot of money. Now, let's check out the rooms. Now, this is a realtor tip. Closet space, all right? In townhouses like this, oftentimes there's not enough storage. Not in this one. And these are the little intangibles that make it easier to sell. Not necessarily it's going to sell more, it's just going to be easier to sell. Let's check out the master. One thing I did was we replaced all the trim around the windows as well because they were falling apart. And 
In my experience, what a lot of flippers do, and I know this as a real estate agent, is they get sloppy, right? They'll get new floors in, they'll put trim here, but the windows look like garbage, right? That just gives the wrong vibe, and which is why sometimes you're not able to sell for as much as you really should. And for me, I was like, you know what? Let's just put the trim around the windows too. It's not that much more expensive and really gives that a, you don't want buyers coming through your flip and feeling like it's a flip. Okay. You want them to feel like whoever did this either is in construction, has a lot of value for his time and energy, or actually lived here. You got them thinking that, they'll pay top dollar. And obviously we want top dollar. And in bedroom number two, it's a decent size. We should be putting, we're doing carpets up here, so that should be done within about a week. And all these doors are actually already new. We got those replaced, hinges, knobs, all that. And uh, yeah, that right there is the flip. Now, if you guys watch any of my content, you know I hate flipping. I don't enjoy any part of it. It is, I think, one of the worst ways to gain wealth because it's like you own a construction company. You look how much work we're doing here, right? And I'm not getting paid a lick until we uh, actually, actually I'm spending money nonstop until we could close on this and I could get my profits back. That being said, why don't we go downstairs and go over all the numbers and I can explain why I decided to go against my own better judgment and buy this flip. Let's go. So townhomes in this area sell for between 230 to 250. Those were the comps. I got this for 125. I was originally gonna wholesale it to a client of mine who I already had lined up for 135. So I was gonna make a quick 10K and bounce. Let's go outside. You know, when I did my first flip, we were sitting on this very same truck after dropping off Flooring Pro. Do you remember that? Oh, exhausting. Dude, I'm so sorry. You could have called. It's okay. What's wrong with your knee? Oh. Hey, zoom in on his knees. <laughs> Dude, yeah, you look like you got bi uh, biomechanical legs over there. <laughs> Do they? Yeah. We digress. So, long story short, I was able to buy for 125. I was gonna wholesale for 135, make quick 10K, and move on with my life. Right? Give it to a client, everything was gonna be great. But then the client I called didn't answer the phone. Uh, then I'm like, okay, well. My name is on it. I also don't know how to wholesale. <laughs> like everything happened so quickly. I was like, okay, let me call a hard money lender and see what are my buying options? Cause I don't have all the capital to buy it and renovate it right now. Uh, but I have, I have a little, I could do a little. I called a hard money lender and he's like, yeah, you only need 10% down. I said, stop 10% down. That's it. Which would have been 12,500 bucks. I had that. And I said, how about the rehab budget? He goes, we'll finance that hundred percent. I said, oof. It'd be stupid not to buy the deal, right? With the interest, and it being such a low purchase price, the interest only payments are insignificant. It's like, I think I'm paying $1,100 a month and we're gonna be fully done with this job for in like two months. And we should be closing on month three. So it's not even that expensive. I said, okay, cool. Long story short, ended up being 15% down on the down payment and then 15% down on the rehab. So all out of my pocket, how much I have in here is 31,000 and some change. The rehab budget is about 40K. So we have 39,900 bucks in escrow. And one thing I'm learning about hard money lenders is it is so hard to get access to that escrow. Um, I literally have to front some of the money myself, do the work, and then they give me the, like, it's more of a reimbursement than it is like funding the project. So you really gotta find a contractor that's flexible or is okay working under those conditions. Fortunately, I had a little bit of cash. I was able to pay some up front, and uh, they're sending me 13K um, sometime this week. So hopefully, hopefully that works out. But that being said, I want to explain why I was able to get such a good deal on this hard money loan. If you are a first time investor and you've never bought anything and you call a hard money lender, you're going to be putting 25 to 35% down with a much higher interest rate. However, because by this point I've done a flip and I own two apartment buildings, three is the magic number for any lender. You got three deals under your belt, the doors open. Which is why I always say, look, get your first deal two, three out the way because that's just, even if you break even, that doesn't matter. Get it out the way so you have the track record, the experience, the know-how. So when better opportunities present themselves, you actually know how to capitalize on it. Which is what happened. The opportunity presented itself. I had over the last year put myself in a position where I could actually get really good financing. And I did. We closed in two, uh, two weeks, no, three weeks. Super simple. They wired the money. I, I came in with my money, and uh, we're gonna sell this for about 235, 250. Make a smooth 40 to 60 thousand dollar net profit, not including my real estate commissions, because that's different. 
Yeah, that's it. That's why we're doing the flip. It's just an opportunity that came my way. And now for the real estate agents, something I have realized through this flip, as much as I hate doing them. So I'll make like 40 to 60K on this flip. That's like $3 million worth of real estate I have to sell. I, mean, I don't even know how many people I have to talk to because my price point is like 200,000. So we're looking at, that's like 15 transactions, which means I got to talk to at least 15 real estate agents, 15 attorneys, and 15 lenders, and not including the clientele. So it's a lot of conversations to make the same amount of money that you can make as an investor, right? Uh, but it's a lot more risk, maybe a little bit more stress, because it's a lot more than your time is at risk, right? So that's just something that a lot of agents out here really are not into being real estate agents, and that's okay, because uh, you can make a lot more being an investor if that's truly what you want. So hopefully that's helpful. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. That's the flip. We'll give you a progress report in about, I don't know, three weeks. <laughs>